Hello, this is Blair Stanislao with the Happy Lion Center. Welcome to our podcast, Mystical and Infamous, where we have playful and easy conversations about anything mystical, getting to the heart of all things strange and weird. Join us in a bit of magical tomfoolery, spreading the alchemy of love and light. And now, we invite you to enjoy the show. What is prosperity? And, and most of the time, we just think, well, it's money. And it is maybe in that physical foundational sense of it's what I need in this material world. And that's what I use to buy things or share or give or whatever it may be. But if we can zoom out and start to see, well, what if prosperity is more beyond the physical into the emotional, the mental, the spiritual? Now we start to look at, okay, well, what else is really important in my life? And if I'm here to create, I don't have to think that it's just, oh, I have to go work hard. I get to actually create more. So it can be money, but maybe you're prosperous in love and in the relationships. And so I I just love using the word prosperity over wealth or abundance. Wealth feels very heavy and it feels very much tied to money. Right. Mm-hmm. We, and we can say, oh, I'm wealthy in love and I'm wealthy in um, relationships and wealthy in wisdom and all these pieces. There's still, to me, there's a heaviness. And so I love the energy of prosperity because it becomes, I don't know, more of that higher quality essence of our soul that just wants to be all of it, to be prosperity. Yeah, yeah. Not that you're seeking to have it. It's it's who you are. And it can be so golden and bright and light and fun and freeing and, and all these pieces. And I think the word, to me, the word wealth has, and I could be wrong, but this is just the feeling that I have. It's like the, the word wealth is more about separation between the haves and the have nots. So if you have wealth or you're wealthy, people don't usually associate that term with love and sharing Mm -hmm. right they they more associate i think mine dramatic is hoarding (laughs) yeah right like to to hold it which is not prosperity right like if you say prosperity it's it's just abundance overall um so i'm curious to hear you talk more on um as you were talking i was thinking you know i think we as a society oftentimes will even if we're abundant in um, emotional life or relationship, right? Relationships, right? I think we tend to, a lot of us tend to um, not really hold that as high as money. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like this, this scheme, this plan, this structure that hu- humanity has about value of a thing, right? That's outside of you. And I'm not saying everybody does that, but I think a lot of times when we think about wealth or prosperity, we're not really honoring what it means to be prosperous in relationship or what it means to be prosperous, like spirituality. I mean, I think I get, I think I get a, a good feel for that in the sense that, you know, you get great immense satisfaction in a way that you would never get in any other way. It has to come from spirituality, but I think we also battle as humans. At least I know, I mean, if I could, if I could just base my life on spiritual, you know, wealth, I'm one of the richest people there is, right? Like, and it's infinite and you just keep creating more of it. Yeah. Yeah. But on the material plane, that's when we start going, "Uh, I don't know how to reconcile this. I don't know how to see that I'm wealthy or see that I'm prosperous and then actually feel that I am in the physical. Mm -hmm. And I, I really see the infinity sideways eight like that's prosperity it's giving is receiving and 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 not to separate it and of course in miracles kind of talks a lot about this stuff too in the sense that to give is to receive and i feel like there's a disconnect there and why i love the infinity sign is because you have that center point Mm -hmm. you have the void you have the beginning of all that is it's it's like it's god right there and if I give, I'm giving to myself, right? I'm infinitely receiving because if I'm even just wanting to share love and give it to you, because maybe I think, oh, like you're sad or something's going on. The moment I give you love, I'm already giving myself that same love. Mm-hmm. And this is the energy and healing. This is the energy 
anywhere. And yet the physical disconnects it to say, well, if I give now I have nothing. Mm -hmm. Like we just immediately think, well, if I gave you money, then I have less in my bank account because we look from that physical lens and to give and receive, there is a masculine and a feminine component. And most of the way our lack and scarcity driven model has been very physical and yet also very masculine. Just keep pushing, just keep working harder, go earn more, right? It's the doing part. It is not the being aspect of the feminine to be in flow, to surrender, to trust, to know that if this is what my heart really desires and I want to give this because it feels good, that I've already received it and more will come. So it's, I don't know, it's just this dance of like seeing we're in it. We're like absolutely the being quality of prosperity means there's nothing to even want or desire. You already are everything that there is. And I feel like that that's the hard piece for many of us to, to get our minds around. Yeah, I think, uh, so I, I deal more in the spiritual part, right? So, I mean, I can always get help too with, with the money, the physical factor that you're talking about, but the, the spiritual part, I totally get. And it is still that same point is still the hardest thing to really understand. And it's such a releasing, it's not, it's not an action. It's not a masculine thing. It's a very much about just letting go and recognizing that that's there and that you are everything you need. Um, And then you can, then you can more fully appreciate as it comes and goes through the masculine and the feminine. So how does that translate into the physical world with money? Like, do we, we get to that place where we say, okay, I have everything I need. Right. And then allow that to go out and come in. Like, how do people normally, what's your experience with people going through those beginning stages where they start to recognize, okay, I really do have everything I need, even monetarily, right. Or even whatever prosperous we're talking about relationship wise or uh, spirituality or whatever, how, do you, you help them to go through that beginning stage where they're starting to recognize that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I like for them to to notice. And because you and I are both wearing glasses, what kind of glasses are they wearing? And what lenses are they seeing the world through? Mm-hmm. Because if you're already seeing through lack and scarcity, you think you don't have anything. You yeah. think you're not anything. And you're always wanting what you don't think you have. So it really is even just those simple pieces of breaking it down of like, okay, my water is half empty or is it half full? And that might seem like, okay, we, we know this, we've heard it over and over. It's all in your perspective, but there is a big part of, if you really believe in prosperity, you are always seeing the overflow. You're seeing that there's enough. And if, you know, if, if we want to just like go into a grocery store and you see all the food on the shelves and you, you stop and you go, okay, this is this one store in my town. And then you start to zoom out and go, how many of this one store do I actually have in my town or my city? Mm -hmm. Or how many other competitors are they are there? And they all have this as well. And then you zoom out to right, like your County or your state or your country. And you start to go, holy shit, there's, there's a lot like, Mm -hmm. and this is in the now there's, there's enough. And yet we can look at ourself and go, well, I have this much money or I earn this much money, but then we start to compare to our friends or our family and go, oh, but they have more. And so then we immediately turn that into lack within ourselves, And so it's that self-worth piece of where are you? How full are you? And again, if you're constantly comparing yourself, you're letting the illusions of the world around you dictate your prosperity. But if we really are centered and just like you're saying, coming from that spiritual place, you are everything. You're infinite. We're just limited by some of the physical components and science says, well, you know, there's gravity and all this stuff, but like, I know I can fly. I know I can soar. I know that I have like all these abilities. We're all starting to step into them. And that in itself, when you start to really see your self-worth and know like what you're here to create, 
on the planet, you can already start to see, well, where was it incongruent? Where was it maybe tied to beliefs that I picked up from somebody else? Mm -hmm. Maybe it really was. There's some stuck emotions that I've never felt. And when I was a little kid, somebody took my lunch money. And ever since I've like had that fear that people are going to take what I have, Mm -hmm. right? They can't take who you are, Mm -hmm. but we still think that somebody's going to come in and take that too. Mm -hmm. And so all of that is the fear that I really see as part of the systems part of the physical world. It's what really keeps us kind of locked into thinking we have to work harder. And so I get to kind of really help see where people are and see with them, but I help them see themselves, mm-hmm. right? In this this new light. So that if there are pieces and parts of themselves to either integrate or to shed and rework, that's where the gold is right? We hear it. Your mess is in your message and right. And your message is in your mess. And it's like, you, you have to go into the fear. You have to go into the wound. And that's the part that most of the time we, we try to avoid. We're mm-hmm. like, Ooh, but that's, we that's, that's too hard. Life. Yeah. we like to put everything to that. Um, you said something that just kind of triggered for me. So I think it was two days ago I'm practicing channeling with somebody and I was asking a question, and so she's channeling this thing, which, I mean, I did ask a question, which directed it, right? But the answer to this was not anything that I'm consciously aware of. And it went back to that comparison. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I don't have any conscious awareness of this. I have a memory of maybe, a, you know, events that would have caused that to happen. But it's it's been so long since those things happened. And they happen so frequently that... I don't even recognize that I'm doing that. So the I'll just tell you that the the statement was there's some issue with me comparing myself to others. You just said that, right? Comparing myself to others. Um, and what it's doing is like I'm kind of taking it from a standpoint of I see somebody else and I start comparing and I um I'm feeling the emotion that, or I'm afraid of feeling the emotion of basically of being hurt, right? I'll be hurt. So what I do then by the comparison is I put myself in second place, probably through, I'm guessing words that I don't remember, right? I don't even recognize I'm doing this. And by putting myself in second place, the other person can't hurt me. Okay. But that is affecting as she's describing it to me, it was like, okay, that's, that's gotta be affecting everything. It can't just be the question that I asked you you know? So how does one go about digging in to find these things? I mean, I know, so that was just a channeling session. I know you can get it through dreams, which I find really ironic because there's nobody else involved in your dream. Like you can't deny that. And, (laughs) uh, and once you know what the dream means, then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, maybe, but if you genuinely ask yourself, if you allow yourself to go into that space where you're totally honest then you can start to say, oh yeah, I did feel that way. Or yeah, yeah, I do know, I do know that feeling that's been conveyed in the dream. So what is the method that you've used to try and figure out those belief systems like you're talking about that really get in the way? So we're going to dig in. And if for you, it's like, oh, I, I really do have this comparison piece. Great. Is there somewhere when, when you really think about that moment, that awareness, or maybe you can call it in right now. It's like, where do you feel that in your body? And depending where it is now, what does it feel like? Is it really tight? Is there an emotion? And then you can start to kind of just go deeper into it. Cause most of the time we don't even want to see it. We don't even want to acknowledge it, which acknowledgement is such a huge piece. And in looking at an individual's core wound, That's the first level. That's like what's tied to our root chakra. If you want to say that foundational piece is if you don't even want to acknowledge it, you're repressing it. You're Mm -hmm. you're, you don't even want to deal with it. You don't even want to have it exist, right? It's kind of like, okay, I, I feel something. No, I don't. No, I don't. And, Mm -hmm. and the next level is kind of denying that it's there too. So it's, we want to be honest. We want to just lean into it. 
that in itself can be really hard depending on how much we've buried it. Mm -hmm. So for you, if there is this part of you, it's like, maybe you're even, you've already accessed a memory or you know where this ties to or where you're, what, what age are you? Right. Because now we can start to go into it Mm -hmm. and kind of craft it and see, well, where did this line start? And sometimes it can be in this life and sometimes it might be on and you start to see other patterns or um, for myself, like I am accessing more and more past lives and I'm looking for the common thread. And my common thread really is my core wound of rejection. Mm -hmm. And in the sense, most of my past lives, I'm by myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm, there's, there's no one else involved or it's like, I've felt rejected or shunned in some way. And so if you start noticing these threads, now we can carry it into this now and acknowledge it and love it, maybe forgive it, give it that deep care, that love, um, the compassion, the tenderness, and also start to see where is this not just stuck inside of you and hindering this life and all lives, but what parts have you repressed? So maybe you don't express the emotions. And when you feel that comparison come in, boom, you're going to have that same trigger. So is it also catching in your throat or you're not, you know, now it's you're, really you're funny th- you say that because like I said, so it first started with a different kind of question. It channeled into, there's this thing of you comparing yourself. And then I had a memory of, oh, this is, I remember things like this. My mother used to like where, where I grew up, which I thought it was the whole town because this is what our family did, but I don't know if it was or not. She would see somebody out in public and she would say, am I that fat? Because she was always looking to understand better where she was to compare herself to other people. Right. Okay. So that was something that went on all the time. But then as the channel was talking, she keeps talking. And the more she says, but she doesn't even know, she doesn't know all my history, right? The more she's talking, I'm like, oh, that totally relates. Exactly. Like you said, totally relates to the throat. Okay. And what's in my family history is thyroid problems. Hmm. Yeah. So I can see coming from the, the other, the other lineage, right? The literal lineage, but also probably any other ancestral connection. And and now there's parts of you that hold back Mm -hmm. because you're going to almost, let's just say, internalize the comparison rather than voice it because you saw your mom voice it and you're like, I don't want to do that. And so now it's, it's held within and it festers Mm -hmm. because everything you do, you look through those glasses Mm -hmm. and your glasses say, am I good enough? Am I better? Am I worse? Am I this? Right. Oh my gosh, this person has this car. Oh, like my car's not Mm -hmm. that great. Or even when you finally get the new car and you're like, oh my gosh, I got a new car. I've never had a new car. Right. There's pure excitement. But then you, you have this person who's like, yeah, I got a new car and it's like the Mercedes. And you're like, "Mm, well, I couldn't get the Mercedes. (laughs) You know what I mean? And immediate you're just like, like, well, I didn't really want that, but gee, it's nice. You know? (laughs) <laughs> well, and again, there, there's some of those components too of like, maybe you did want it a little bit, but we'll yeah. already start to shove it down. Like, no, I didn't. That's, that's not for me or, and then we can almost go right into judgment. Well, they're this, mm-hmm. I'm not. And again, all judgment is self-judgment mm-hmm. and comparison is to what we kind of talked about earlier about this, this beauty in contrast. Uh huh somebody's going to want what you don't have and somebody's going to have what you don't want. And it's like, everything is going to give you this polarity to integrate. And somewhere there's a part of you, different life, different dimension that actually did get the Mercedes. Mm -hmm. And that's the part when we can go, I am prosperous. I am everything. I have it all. There are parts of you everywhere, right? Like we know quantumly, if if you're already thinking of a decision, do I get the Mercedes or not? There's a somewhere, there's a part of you that did it. And in this lifetime, you chose not to. So guess what? You already got the Mercedes. Who gives a crap if it's not in this lifetime? That wasn't the journey you wanted. But when we can start to really accept that it's, you're the all, you're every different option comparison there could be. You've been it, you've lived it, you've played in it. That feels hard to be like, well, how do I get there? Yeah. But that's staying in that pure 
love light energy of everything is what it is. And it feels like we're on a journey that's divinely guided, right? And so if yeah. you were meant to get the car, it's going to happen. Does that mean you had to like push your willpower and your desire and be like, I'm really going to manifest this? No, it's ease. It's grace. It's just being in that flow of, you know what, if this is what I want, you set the intention, you let it go and it'll come back if it's meant to be in this lifetime, in this now moment. Yeah. But our brain wants to hold on to everything and ruminate and stir. And so I also look at where are we in our energy in the sense we're meant to be very present. Mm -hmm. And most of us are not. Mm -mm. We're in our head and our head already is living out all of those multidimensional what ifs and possibilities that you're you're kind of so lost you don't even know what to go after here and now because your mind will already say, yeah, Blair, you can't have that. You're not worthy. Um, so-and-so already had that. And right in the comparison, will just keep playing out. And those glasses will continually be fixed until you realize you don't have this power. Come into my heart, be in the space of love yeah. and be truly excited and happy for others when they get what they want. And as we know, though, the physical world is very limited, but like in the sense of um, how long we get excited and hold it, right? It's like, it's usually like a yay. And then boom, you're on to the next thing. And so if we're in that infinite space of this is great and we're so excited, you would probably see that friend. And every time you saw them with their vehicle, you'd be like so excited for them. But they they probably moved on like, oh, I'm, you know, now I'm trying to buy the big house or go on this vacation or, you know, because we're so kind of just trying to keep up with the the foundational systems that are based in fear and lack yeah. and trying to get more when really it's already here. And if you close your eyes and dream and visualize yourself there, it's really no different than having it physically, except it's just not physical. But you can absolutely craft it in that way and have it be so real that it does end up showing up. Yeah, I think that's I mean, regardless of whether they're in this school of thought or not, I think that's I think everybody could really identify with you want whatever you want something you are daydreaming about. OK, we'll just put you in the daydream regardless of what the previous story is. But you're in the daydream and you are spending so much energy thinking about all the details of what it is, this thing that you want. Well, of course, however much time it takes for that thing to manifest, most people I think can agree that they they at least spent some time thinking about that thing that they wanted. Um, and I think there's something to honor. Um, you know, some of essentially what we were talking about is like shadow work. You go into the the stuff that feels heavy and dark and it could be painful, but the heaviness of it, you go into that and by doing that, you also can kind of see, you know, it's kind of like um, Abraham Hicks's idea of the contrast, which is you, you don't have something that you want. Well, you didn't know you didn't want this or you didn't know you wanted this other thing. But now that you have the contrast, now you can say, oh, now I, now I know I want it to be a blue car and not a green car or whatever. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. I mean, you can't, I mean, even, I mean, even famous people admit that kind of stuff. Like uh, who is that? Uh, Jim Carrey writing himself a, mil a million dollar check, you know, because that's something that he wanted, but he didn't necessarily, he did not take action, but he didn't, he didn't dwell on that per se. He just kept it, you know, with him. Right. And when we're bringing in this infinite aspect of our being, being a soul that has been everywhere and everything, there's so much potential, there's so much possibility. And so to me, physically we created money that's not part of what <laughs> is true and infinite it's fabricated by us like we made it up mm -hmm. so what if you could bypass that and those are the really cool synchronistic miraculous stories that sometimes you hear what if you could bypass what the money piece right so it's like if if jim carrey has this dream of like i want a million dollars cool but spirit's like, what are you going to do with that? 
-hmm. right? Like what's the greater intention? And so if you're like, if I really want actually a million dollars, because I want to go open this retreat center, because I want to help children be educated, whatever. Now, suddenly, maybe you don't necessarily need that million dollar check, but you have a flood of resources that show up and someone's like, here, I have this, this land, Mm -hmm. let me gift it to you. And you know what I mean? And so, oh, I wanted this car and you didn't have to buy it. It is gifted or it shows up in some way. Exactly. And that's the part that our minds have the hardest time because we want to logically step-by-step see how it's going to happen. Which is really want to be able to. Yes. Because then you're telling your highest self and spirit and everything connected that I don't care how your magic works, but this is the (laughs) way it needs to show up. Right. It's very demanding. It's very controlling. It's so human. It's your ego. That's actually coming in to say, spirit, I'm going to override you because I am the best. And I know how this works. (laughs) It's so funny. You say that because I distinctly remember going off to undergraduate so I was like 18, right? And um, I was in the South and I had a roommate who I didn't know. I'd only met her because she became my roommate. She said to me one night, Blair, do you pray? I didn't really like this roommate very much. I didn't, I mean, I didn't have like real animosity to her, but we just didn't really connect and I didn't understand her. And I just thought, why are you asking me if I pray? So I just entertained the conversation. I was like, yeah, sure. What's up, right? Then she proceeds to tell me what she wanted me to pray for, for her, which were specific outcomes, okay, of certain things. I don't remember what they were. But I think the thing that really annoyed me on some level um, at at 18 was this idea of telling God what to do, which is exactly what you're talking about here, right? Like, yeah, why don't we just say what we really want? And in the channeling practice, we spend a lot of like, there's a lot of time that you spend that's like, Somebody will ask a question and for me, I'll either not get the answer or I'll essentially be told that's not the right question. I, they've said that before. Like, it's not the right mm-hmm. question. So can you rephrase it? Can you elaborate? You know, you help them kind of dig into what is the real question. You know, I'll just use a simple one. Uh, you know, how can I manifest my vacation or something like that? Or where should I go on vacation? Well, that's not really the question. The question is more more probably closer aligned with how can I create more joy in my life, right? Because you, the idea of a vacation is to go and relax. And how can I keep, create more relaxation in my life? Yeah. And you won't even get the answer if you're not ready to receive it yet either. Yeah. <laughs> if the yeah. timing's not right, if you're not to yeah. this state of being where you can actually openly receive it and move it forward. Mm-hmm. So, so there's always these dances of like, oh, I, I know this, but then we don't ask. So it's still not going to show up. Mm-hmm. And yet we're also wanting to control it. Mm-hmm. Left brain logic. Yeah. And I will say, having come from the financial industry, this is where it all is. It's all logic. It's all planning. It's all structure. And to to zoom out and see where the planet is as she's evolving and she's asking us to help her through her evolution, we also are evolving. Our consciousness is shifting. So where we used to be in this left brain dominant masculine world, we're flowing into the feminine. And really the ultimate goal is to find that connection, that balance, harmonic, resonant place of left and right together. And we don't know how to do that. So if we look at it for finance, for money, most of the time, it's like you are like, I want to do this thing. I need money. Right. And so maybe you do need to go to the bank or you go to the bank and banks like, well, where are you, where are you going to like, where are your finances? What do you have in your bank account? And, um, you know, and it goes, it goes even crazier when it's a business because it's like, well, let, let's see your balance sheet and your income statement. How much income and can you afford this? So they're already telling you what they deem your worthiness to be. They're not even looking at the projections, right? We don't look at projections. We don't know what your worth is in the future. We don't know if something else is going to show up and suddenly you just like have this waterfall of money coming in. We're looking at it right here, right now. And we're telling you that you suck. 
I'm comparing you against everybody else and I'm not going to give you this loan. Right. And now you're like, yeah. what do I do? And in that moment, we already feel our worth demolished. We feel like we have no resources. We absolutely don't feel prosperous. And we start really believing that I have to save and have this egg before I could do anything in my life. Now you're not living, right? Yep. Every day you're going somewhere and there's probably an opportunity, but you don't even see it because you truly believe, well, I don't have the money for that or it's not going to show up. And so I can't take that trip. But maybe on that trip, you would have run into the person who becomes a really profound person in your life and opens you to meet the right people that could have brought in more of the, the prosperity or the money piece of it. And so it's like, we've lived in this place of planning, planning, strategy, structure, and it's going away. So more and more, I've heard it in different industries, but people are starting to notice where you used to be able to predict the stock market, uh, interest rates, it, it's getting harder and harder. It's like, it's so unknown. We're getting to this place of we truly are living in the abyss of the unknown. And that scares people. Because they're used to this predictability piece. They're used to pulling up the weather and being like, great, the weather says this is what it's going to be. But guess what? When the weather is not what it's supposed to be, how do you feel? Yeah. Already triggered. You already feel that fear coming up of like, but they said it was going to be a sunny day. And why is it like hailing? Okay. Right. And now you're you're upset that it's hailing. You're not in the now of like, wow, this is really cool. Look, like we don't get hail and there's hail today. Okay. Right. So this is the part where I've known for a while, like the foreshadowing is going away. And uh, what I recently heard was a channeled angel message. And this makes total sense. And I love it. No more foreshadowing because we are all creating in the now. And every moment you're creating, your future is already changing. And it's harder and harder for us to know what that is because we're in the now moment, which means you don't need to be in the future. You don't even need to think about it. You don't need to worry about it. But if you if you stop and pause and look kind of in the bigger picture, you're like, but wait a minute, I've got to book appointments and go to the dentist and you still need to plan the future or book your flights if you're going on a trip. And right, there's certain things, but in this now moment, what is it you're creating? In the now moment, do you feel so expansive? You feel so good that you're like, yes, I'm going on this trip to Hawaii, which which I'm doing in a couple of months with my family, right? And so it's like, okay, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But right now I know we are going to go and let's book it. Mm -hmm. As the now continues to come, if I'm living in this prosperous way, everything is synchronistic. Everything is good. Everything is exactly what needs to happen. I don't need to know what that is. But the more we get to be the kids, the children who are like, yay, look, it's hailing today. Oh, can I go play outside, mom? Right? It's like more and more we're excited for this unknown of like, what is spirit bringing me? Is it really an obstacle? Well, only if I think it is. Mm -hmm. Is it something that's allowing me to evolve and grow and recognize in myself where whew, I still have some work here? Okay then it, it's nothing but gold coming in. And if I get to Hawaii in a couple months and realize, wow, this, this was not what I was expecting, perfect, right? Because maybe things show up and people show up and the right opportunities show up. But if I'm in my head right now, planning my life in two months, like we're gonna be on this trip and we're gonna do this on this day, if something shows up to counteract that, I'm probably going to be upset, right? I'm going to feel disappointed. That's not going to help me grow if I am stuck in my own rigid masculine way of this is how the universe you are going to show up for me, right? Versus if I'm in flow, I'm going to just be there and know that if we have flights delayed or if we have a car thing or if like you know, we do see dolphins and we weren't expecting it. It's like, that's the magic of truly being alive. That is being prosperous. 
that is being in the flow of the now moment and everything being created from that point. So if you're lost in the fear and the lack and the scarcity, if you carry that into your now right here, it may still be in your future. Mm -hmm. But at some point, if you change that new now where you're like, oh, get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. You can almost guarantee now you can still kind of foresee like that's not going to be my future. I'm not bringing that in right now. So every day is your new moment to show up for yourself, claim the prosperity that is you, be prosperity, be that energy, be the love. And yes, there may be things that show up and kind of unravel you. And all you can do is breathe, pause, notice where, same thing that you were doing with the comparison, notice in my body, what's going on? Where have I felt this before? Oh, my mom used to do this. Ooh, do I still let people walk all over me? Oh, I do. Actually, that's why I'm upset. I I didn't put my foot down. I didn't set my boundaries. Suddenly you're already changing everything to go, okay, now I know. And if you need to be tested, you will. And in that next experience, you'll get the opportunity to take what you had the awareness about to implement differently, to put in some boundaries, shift it, and then see how you do. And if you master it, you're done. You move on to the next thing. And and the goal is that we are constantly clearing away all the muck, all the the crap that is fear-based, that is lack-based, that is non-love, ultimately, to bring you to this place of if you're just truly in the flow of love, you just, you're kind of like, I don't want to say like the artsy fairy or like the, you know, like you're just floating around. Like you can still be very grounded and be present and not so like floaty. But you're you're in the flow and you're excited. You're curious. Yeah, the way I would describe it is um, it's almost like it, in some ways when I'm in this state, I would say life feels like an adventure. It's like, okay, let's go see what's going to happen. I'm going to do this thing. I'm here and like, and, and that from that place, things don't irritate you. You don't get triggered into the fear or, you know, any of that stuff because you didn't try to control everything. So therefore you're not disappointed when it does or does not go away. I mean, go a certain way, but, um, yeah. it's, it's, much your- longer. it is that fairy kind of a feel, but it's, it can just be relaxed. Like whatever happens, happens. Yes. Choose your own adventure book. Yeah. Right. In no way are you ever reading the book going, oh no, what if I pick the, you know, and, and only when we start really being in our head and we're older, do we still want to try and like control the situation and go, oh God, I hope I don't pick the wrong thing. Right. But Mm -hmm. you really can never pick anything that's wrong in the book or in life. There is nothing wrong because if you want to say what's wrong, it's just simply that contrast. It's showing you what you're not okay with, or it's showing you this, this opposite track or piece that you would have never experienced without it. I want to say right now, I had a, uh, a revelation after my husband died fairly, I was very much, I was very, very much into the grave. I definitely was like six months or less, but, uh, there was this, uh, you know, I was in the South. So there's this heavy Christianity feeling there. And that's the only thing I'd ever known. Not that I, you know, was a devout anything or another, but it definitely was still there, right? And they have that phrase, God doesn't give you anything you can't handle. And I totally believed in that. I didn't have any any qualms about that. But here I was really upset and really very, very much in the, the headspace of worried about whether what I did was the right choice, not only for myself, but for my kids and long-term, blah, 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 okay? I finally had the realization on a walk. It's like, okay, you know, if, if God doesn't give you anything you can't handle, then you can't make a mistake. You literally cannot make a mistake. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. doesn't matter what happens. There is no mistake because there's no judgment, right? And the talk about free, you know, that's just like, when you finally really realize that kind of thing, like I can't screw this up. Yes. And same, like take that and apply it to money. Yeah. You really can't. And even if let's just say you get duped and somebody tells you to do this thing and you find out that you send money and it's not legit, yeah, it still wasn't a mistake, right? Because in that moment, love would say, well, I guess they needed that money. Yep. And 
I'm just spreading the love. And I learned what to to do next time. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And so every single thing, sometimes you're like, oh, okay, could we have less of that? You know, <laughs> if you feel like you're still in that kind yeah. of pattern and it happens over and over, but then there's something in you that you haven't learned yet. Right. And you almost need that reminder or that hit over the head to be like, okay, are you going to get it this time? And and once you once you see it and you you realize and you can chuckle and kind of laugh at it, mm-hmm. oh, like game over. You, then you are truly living life because yeah. life is meant to be fun and, that's and really adventurous. The that's really the prosperous. Yeah. Being. Yeah. And so that's where you can, if if we loop back to how do you define prosperity? Well, maybe we do have it where it includes more virtues of our lived values of, you know, there is joy and there is love and there is peace and there is sharing or contribution or something, right? Like prosperity is if I'm giving my gifts, I already know I'm receiving my very gifts. And if that means it's tied to money as well, cool. Then whatever I am giving it's coming right back to me so that I can keep co-creating in this now moment with my community, with mother earth, right? Whoever, whatever it is, you're creating prosperity in that ripple across the multiverse ultimately. Um. So would you say, I know we talked about this. I know we talked about it on the um, summit, but I don't remember if we talked about it on, in the previous podcast with you, but would you say that getting connected to spirit is the way to open the door for somebody who's really stuck in uh, this masculine, it is fear-based, fear-based structure that humanity has, okay, around money or whatever you want to call that prosperity, wealth, whatever. There is a, a masculine and um, fear-based kind of structure. So if somebody's looking to really shift from that into this open, free, truly genuinely prosperous what would you say is the the best vehicle to get there spirit is always the the bigger journey right and because it's it's this greater power so what is that greater power that is what you've deemed to be outside yourself that's actually within yourself Mm -hmm. and that can be god goddess source infinite creator right like whatever the term is there really is that quantum piece that even scientists are realizing they don't know how to quantify yet. And there's this other force. And if you're trying to um, give observation, then this starts to change. And it's like that. That's what you're looking to, to tap into. And I say within you. And if we want to really say it's within the space, within yourselves, like it's what we're all created from Mm -hmm. and it's connected to all that is right right so everything and if we keep saying i'm going to give my power to this external part then that's why we live in the systems and the structure because that's exactly what the left brain created and the masculine created were these systems because if you want to say energetically if everybody's sending to this one system and let's just say government Right. Imagine energetically how much they're siphoning (laughs) and becoming more and more powerful and greedy and manipulative because that's how we've designed it all ultimately. But you start realizing, wait a minute, that very power is within me. It ignites me. It fuels me. There is this inner space, spaciousness, peace that you start creating for yourself so that you are very solid, even within the space, right? But you're solid in your knowing, in your truth, that no matter what starts to happen around you, it doesn't unnerve you. And you're still grounded. You're still in the present. You're still in your own control, if you want to say, because you've tapped into that greater power and it keeps refueling you, energizes you. Send inquiries, suggestions for new discussion topics and comments to podcast at happylioncenter.com. That's podcast at happylioncenter.com. If you found this content enjoyable or helpful, please comment, like, share, and download. 
donations are appreciated and help us to produce more of similar content. Consider making a contribution at the links in the description box. Your support is greatly appreciated. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the Happy Lion Center and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. None of the content provided should be considered a substitute for legal, financial, medical, psychiatric advice, or as care from a certified professional.